Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at a brand new lens from Laowa, which is the 10mm f2.8 0D FF, which is a 10mm lens for full-frame cameras with supposedly zero distortion. And it's not a fisheye lens, it's rectilinear. Sounds impossible? Yeah, that's what I thought so too. But it turns out it's real and I have it right here. So uh, yeah, let's take a look, shall we? Before we start, I just want to say a little disclaimer that this lens has been sent to me by Laowa for the purpose of this review. It is a loaner, so I will have to return it when I'm done. However, I am not getting paid for this video and this is a completely independent review. So 10mm lens, huh? That's why, and I mean, that is really why. Of course, such short focal length can have a number of applications, including filming videos in tight spaces like a car, vlogging by holding the camera at arm's length, real estate photography in tight spaces, landscape photography, etc. However, here on this channel, we are going to focus on astrophotography. And Lawan themselves on their website claims that this lens is great for astro. So I was really curious on how will it perform under the stars. So we're going to take a look at some of the images that I captured in Lightroom in just a moment. Take a look at the star quality in the corners and all. But first, let's take a look at the uh, physical features of this lens. So this lens came in a really nice box and inside we can find the lens itself, which feels really well made. Not sure what the material is, but it feels metallic and it has a slight bluish tint, which I find really pleasing. The lens is designed for mirrorless cameras and you can choose from Sony E, Nikon Z, Canon RF and L mount for Leica. However, only Sony E and Nikon Z can offer you a version with autofocus. I got an RF mount uh, here for my uh, Canon EOS R, which is fully manual. There are no electronic connectors on this lens, so you can find a fully manual aperture ring and a manual focus ring. The focus ring feels really good to operate. It is smooth but well dampened and the close focusing distance is unreal here. Here I had my uh, color checker uh, focus card almost touching the front of the lens and I was still able to reach focus. Incredible. The aperture ranges from f2.8 to f22 and the maximum aperture of f2.8 is in my opinion just enough for Astro, even untracked, especially for such a wide uh, focal length. On the front of the lens, there is a built-in permanently attached lens hood and the front element is not bulbous, unlike other extremely wide lenses. And there's a 77 mm thread for traditional screw-on filters. However, due to the built-in lens hood, it is not possible to use a larger diameter filters with step-up rings. But the good thing is, that the lens is also compatible with clip-in filters. So I tested this and I was able to mount both my Optolong L-Pro light pollution filter and my Astronomic Hydrogen Alpha filter. And I was able to reach focus with both of them. So um, yeah, let's jump into Lightroom and let's see some of the images that I captured with this lens. So here we are in Lightroom. I have a bunch of images here that I've selected to uh, touch on several points that I wanna make. And the first is how wide this lens actually is. So this shot is a 28 millimeters shot, which is the lens that I would usually use for Astro, like Lansky Astro. And this is an image taken with the 10 millimeter lens. And as you can see, if we uh, compare these, so this one is 10 millimeters, so this one is uh, 28. And as you can see, this one is way wider. The section that we see here in 28 is pretty much like uh, this kind of, uh, as much, I would say. So you can see that the 10 millimeter is really wide. It gives us like almost twice as much vertically if we shoot in this orientation. So it is a lot. Uh, and also if we take a look at an image of the Aurora, yeah, this is the pink Aurora in Poland, which is pretty rare. I was, I was trying to, to shoot this a couple of nights ago. This shot is a shot with the 28 millimeter lens. And this one is with the 10 millimeter from Laowa. And again, as you can see, this is super wide. Like if we take a cutout of this, so the 10 millimeters would, would, I mean the 28 from this 10 millimeter image would be something like, I don't know, something like this. So you can really see how wide the 10 millimeter is. And if the Aurora was to capture the, um, cover the entire sky, like it would be if I was in the Arctic circle, 
then with a 10 mil I would be able to capture you know a lot more of the Aurora than with a, than with a 28 mil. Uh, one thing to note is that uh, focusing with this lens is actually pretty tricky at night. Uh, here's the shot of uh, I, I'm, I'm usually using to confirm my focus, a focus on stars sort of 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters square filter. Uh, I have a separate video about this filter uh, if you like. I mean, it's not a filter, it's um, you know, something you put in front of a lens uh, to kind of check focus. It's like a button of mask, but for wide angle lens. I have a video if you want to check it out, you can, you can check it out. I'm going to put the link somewhere. Um, but anyways, if I zoom in here, you can see this kind of spiky pattern that confirms my focus. Uh, but you can see how wide this lens is. You can even see my face here and the entire filter only covers a portion of the field of view. And it's hard to focus because if you normally when you focus, you magnify the light view like five or 10 times, and then you try to make the star as small as possible or using a button of mask, you try to align the spikes. Uh, but here, because the, the field of view is so wide, if you zoom in 10 times, it's not enough usually. So it was actually pretty tricky to focus. And unless you have like a Canon EOS RA, which has 30 times magnification in live view, that would be really, really helpful with this lens. But even with you know regular cameras, I think you can still do it, but kind of expect that it might be a little bit trickier than with, with longer focal lens. Uh, one thing I also wanted to note here that uh, the vignetting on the 10 millimeter uh, lens from Lawa is uh, pretty significant. You can see uh, this is a, yeah, this is vignette at f2.8 and this is at f4. This is f4 on the left and f2.8 on the right. Uh, and f with f2.8, obviously the vignette is much larger, um, uh, vignette being the darker uh, corners here. At f4, it's less, so this is to be expected. But with f2.8 and such a wide angle of view, the vignette is pretty, pretty big. However, you can easily fix this in Lightroom using a lens profile, which I will show you in just a moment. And the distortion in this lens is really quite small. Um, it's not, it's not nothing like you know zero d zero distortion would uh, suggest, but it's definitely minimal. Here's the shot of a chessboard where you should have all of these lines vertical and all of these lines kind of horizontal. And you can see at the top that there is a slight barrel distortion, but it's very minimal for such a wide focal length and with this lens being a rectilinear lens. Then you can see if we scroll down here to lens profiles, there's actually no lens profile for this lens that I could find as of time of making this video because this is such a new lens. But even if we use a Venus Optics Lawa profile for a 12 millimeter lens, it already kind of fixes. Oh my God, my parrot is on the roll today. Sorry for that. Um, even if you do this, you can see that the distortion is going away pretty nicely and also vignetting is pretty much fixed. Now let's take a look at the star quality in the corners because this is usually what suffers with such complex lens designs as this one. And I have an image here at f 2.8, this is a raw sub at f2.8. And also I have one at f4. So this is this exact same scene. And at f2.8, if we go into the corners at 100% zoom, there is some astigmatism here. Um, but honestly, you can see Andromeda here. That's how wide it is. Look at this. We have core of the Milky Way here and all the way to Andromeda on the other side. Of Zenith, this is amazing. Uh, you can see in the corners, I would say these are very impressive and very good. Um, you Normally you will not notice this if you just look at this image without pixel peeping. But even if you do, I think this is very, very well controlled. Let's actually zoom out a little bit. These corners look very good to my eye. I've seen way worse sort of lens distortions, even with longer focal lens, like a 24 millimeter. So with this 10 mil wide open, I think this is a very good result. And if we compare it to an f4, you can see this is f4, this is f2.8. Here again, f2.8, yeah, f2.8 is on the left, f4 is on the right. There is a slight improvement, but not a lot. So honestly, I would just go ahead and shoot wide open with this lens astrophotography. I would not hesitate uh, to do that. Um, and yeah, I think it can produce really good final images. Here is one of the final images that I have taken here. Look at this um, nice Milky Way kind of going all the way up. 
you can see we have uh, we have the core somewhere down below the horizon actually already and here we have Cygnus I think this makes for a really nice composition if you like really wide angles of views um, angle of views <laughs> for Milky Way shots um, also if you want to do like star trails uh, this also could look very cool this is actually from my attic so this is not a really you know awesome place with some awesome foreground this is just you know my neighborhood <laughs> Uh, but you can see that you can really capture a huge angle of view. Um, however, if you want to use like clip-in filters that I previously mentioned that it is possible, um, the corners look a little bit funny. Actually, this image is taken with the Optolong L Pro. Uh, however, uh, the focus kind of goes funny in the corners, which honestly is to be expected. With these clip-in filters, they even say uh, themselves that with very wide angle lenses, it may not perform as well. The image quality will degrade towards the sides and the corners a little bit. So here I have three images um, that I have taken without any filters with the Optolong L Pro and also with the Astronomic HA um, Hydrogen Alpha filter, which looks very red because how the HA filter is designed, which I'm not going to get into the details now. But you can see that the corners without any filters uh, look pretty good, the branches and everything. But if you look at the image taken with the Optolingal Pro, you can see that here on the side, it looks kind of funny, kind of fuzzy. But again, this is to be expected with these kinds of filters. But I was able to reach focus, no problem. If we kind of focus on the focus, zoom in on the focus checker, you can see it is in focus with this clip and filter indeed. And same with the Astronomic HA. So the focus is achieved here, although it's kind of hard to see because such a wide lens and you know the focus checker was at a distance to get I was trying to get it to be past the hyperfocal distance to have uh, infinity focus tested for the stars and again on the sides it looks kind of fuzzy so just bear that in mind but and now there's an ambulance wow cannot film videos today anyways um yeah, that is to be expected, but honestly, if you want to do like HARGB, you're probably going to be only taking a, you know, middle portion with the Milky Way or something interesting and blend it into your final image. So I think this is also fine, but something to, to note that with such a wide focal length, these filters, even though they do fit, they are kind of funny in the, on the edges, but it's not the fault of the lens. Honestly, I think this is just how these filters behave with such a wide focal lens. And that's pretty normal, but I just wanted to uh, kind of point that out. And also one thing that I wanted to show is that uh, if you want to do untracked astrophotography, let's go over here. This is a 30 seconds exposure, untracked, and you can see the stars look pretty sharp. No visible star trailing, really. I mean, maybe slightly if you pixel peep, but honestly, this is fine uh, if you just look at it zoomed out. And according to the rule of 500, which is an old fashioned rule, but still you can kind of see the ballpark and how, how this lens and the focal length on this lens affects this calculation. According to the rule of 500, if you divide uh, 500 by your focal length, which is 10, it gives you the number of seconds you can shoot untracked. And with this lens, it's a whopping 50 seconds, which is almost a minute, which is insane. I would never go that far. Uh, I would usually cut this time into half, which here with 30 seconds is a little bit more than a half. and it is, it is, looks pretty decent to me. This is what I would expect from an untracked image. Uh, and again, with, uh, with um, corrected vignetting and distortion, this is how it looks. So these dark corners really kind of go away if you use a lens profile. And also if there's an official lens profile for this particular lens, maybe it would be even better fixed. So overall, I think this is a very impressive lens, such a short focal length and almost no distortion and a pretty bright maximum aperture and the ability to use both clip-in and traditional screw-on filters with it makes it a fantastic option if you need such a wide angle of view. And apart from wide-angle Milky Way shots and star trail images, which I've already shown you, I think this lens is an amazing option also for meteor showers. You could have two cameras sort of back-to-back -back with the Lawa uh, Telmel shooting all night, and that way you could cover the entire sky, which is exactly what you need if you want to capture the elusive meteors burning up in our atmosphere.
Also, if you're into photographing the Aurora Borealis, this lens would allow you to capture it in all of its magnificence um, with such a wide angle. And you can also do something like a time lapse of the Aurora with an impressive coverage of the sky. And one last thing, if you're into Milky Way panoramas, for example, 360 spherical renditions or similar projections, yes, you can do it with a longer focal length, like uh, I was used to do it with a 28 mil. But doing it with a 10 mm lens would make the entire process way faster and more efficient, as you will be able to cut down the number of panels for the entire panorama significantly. So would I recommend this lens for Astro? Yeah, I think I totally would, especially if you're into like meteor showers and star trace photography, but also for Milky Way as well, especially if you don't have a tracker and with such a, short, uh, with such a short focal length, you can take longer exposures and track without any visible star trailing. So yeah, this lens currently retails for uh, $799 and it's on pre-order on Laowa, but they told me that if you order now, you can expect the shipment to uh, reach you by the end of October this year. So I think that's not too bad. And also, if you want to place your order, you can use my affiliate link that's uh, down below in the description. That way I would get a small commission from Laowa with no additional cost to you. And that way you'll be helping out the channel, which uh, would be much appreciated. All right. That's it for me for today. Check out, the, check out the lens, check out my Instagram to see the images I've taken with this lens and more. Check out my YouTube channel for more videos and see you in the next video. Bye.